the House as if to say it's going to make a real big difference mm -hmm. uh, as to who control the House, whether it be the Democrats or the Republicans. Mm -hmm. uh, and another interesting uh, thing, there was an uh, article in uh, the Atlanta Journal-Constitution about a couple of weeks ago said that murder in the South mm -hmm. is related, is uh, linked to slavery. Mm -hmm. uh, and those are just a couple of things, but as we talk about the uh, events leading up to the coming of the Messiah, uh, what say you about, uh, first of all, the voting thing, if there's any link at all to murder in the South being linked to slavery and, uh, and, and our, in our discussion about the uh, coming Messiah? Well, to deal with murder, uh, 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 linked to slavery. That's what they did, but most of the slaves murdered them off. You know? Well, I think that some of the, the, the homicide I rates. I know, my right? brother. I, I know what they're referring to, but what I'm saying is this. Regards to what they try to put it on, Mm -hmm. uh, the nation that we are servants to, they murdered off more people all over the earth than anyone. Right. You know, so when they get to talking about what, they, what the nation like to do is wash our dirty linen, linen on worldwide wide TV. This explains why when other nations come over here, they don't want to live in our neighborhoods, mm. you see, because they think that we're this and they think that we're that until they get to know us as a people. You know, so as far as the murder is concerned, I, I, I don't see how they can link that to slavery in the South. I, I, I can't even see how they can attach that because the people, like I said, the people that has done more uh, 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 murdering uh, than anything are the nations of the earth, the Christians. Mm. I mean, they fought wars. We know it, the Crusades. They fought wars all over Europe, Asia. Now they, they geared up to fight, go on another crusade over there with Saddam Hussein because he don't want him in his country, right. you see. So as far as murder is concerned, brother, they can try to put that on, on the uh, uh, who they want to, but they have to understand who we are. We are a product of this system. Mm -hmm. See, that's what we are. We are a product of this system. Uh, for years, we've tried to uh, get into the system you know, to have equal footings in the system, but it hasn't worked, and it can't work because of who we are. See, we what we don't understand is this, is that Satan is at war with us. Mm. So whether we go and elect uh, a Democrat or a Republican, mm. regards to who control the House, eventually my brother's going to have to come and take this House and control it, simply right. because man and all of his unrighteousness yeah. is uh, 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 he's headed for his date with destiny according to the prophets and what man is doing is trying to camouflage a lot of these things so that we as a people won't know what's going on like you always said my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge mm -hmm. and it's because of this lack of knowledge that we get caught off into a whole lot of things and we haven't kept our eye on the prize not the prize that we talked about during the civil rights movement because we know what that was and we should have known that wasn't going to work in the beginning. The prize that we had to keep, that we failed to keep our eye on, is the prize that Yahweh Himself has offered us as a people. But what we've allowed to happen, we've allowed our captors to teach us things that are uh, proximities of the truth. Mm -hmm. Not quite true, but this will do for you. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I was watching the show uh, the other week when the sisters was talking about how how the Roman Catholic Church had instituted all of these uh, oh, religion, all yeah, the, the laws and so forth that the church, uh, that, that the Christian church deal with uh, uh, today. And uh, we can very well see that all these things that has been set up are truly against us. I mean, uh, take uh, uh, Halloween, All Hallows Eve, for instance. A lot of our people having a fog inside. You know, uh, brother and I went down to the service station to get some gas, and there was a woman standing out there dressed, sister. She dressed as a witch. Her husband was dressed as a monk. I guess it was her, her husband was dressed as a monk and so forth. And but see, they didn't. I bet you they didn't get into uh, the public library and read up on these things to see the paganism that was tied up in these things. I remember uh, reading stories to where in Salem they used to burn witches. Mm. If a guy was after a woman and he was a man of power and she didn't do what he wanted done, he'd burn as a witch and they'd burn at the stake. Mm. You see, and to see our people dress up as these witches and so forth, not really knowing that uh, they, uh, Yahweh said, 
You shall not mm. suffer a witch to live. Mm -hmm. You shall not suffer a witch to live. As a matter of fact, we had one of our kings, the first king to rule over Israel. Once he wouldn't do what he was spoke, what Yahweh told him to do, mm -hmm. he went to see a medium. And they were supposed to have put all the medium out of, mediums out of the land. So he went to a medium and had the medium talking about, bring me up Samuel. Do he actually think that a person that's working for the adversary, the devil, can pull one of God's saints up? What mm. he did was pull up a demon. Mm. And the demon ever said, why are you troubling me, man? You know, God, Yahweh has departed from you, you know. But it, what he goes to show is the length that our people will go either to please themselves or to please the people that are around them. And we don't get back and do the research pertaining to uh, 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 the truth pertaining to these things. But uh, all of these things are tied up, like I said before, with religions. A lot of our people don't realize that. Let me read you a, a piece of scripture here out of, out of the book of Thessalonians. Mm -hmm. Read you a piece, of, a piece of scripture out of Thessalonians here. And you can see very well what's, what's, what's taking place. It's in 2 Thessalonians, 2nd uh, chapter. And Paul told, told us some things was going to take place. Uh, 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 first, I'm sorry, it's in 1 Thessalonians, 2nd uh, 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 chapter. When Paul told us, say, that uh, there was going to be uh, uh, a falling away first. Mm -hmm are falling away from what? Are falling away from sound doctrine. Uh, uh, in verse uh, ch uh, 2 Thessalonians 2 and verse 1, Paul said, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Adonai, Yahshua, the anointed one, and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter from us, as that the day of the Lord is at hand. You know, people keep saying, the Lord can come any day. He can come any day. No, he can't. He can't come till the prophecies has been fulfilled up to the time that he is supposed to come. Mm. See, that's, that's part of that, that, that doctrine, that, that satanic doctrine uh, that's out here. Mm -hmm. Verse 3, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of, uh, uh, of perdition. Mm -hmm. They're falling away from what? They're falling away from sound doctrine. The falling away from the truth as God has given us uh, the truth to give to the world. Mm -hmm. But while we've been in captivity, we have to understand what happened. The Europeans put us in captivity and they took over. And then uh, 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 when they came out of the Dark Ages, they came out with this hocus pocus that uh, our people did. Of course, it's been modified right. quite a bit by different right. people. But they came up with this hocus pocus that we're dealing with today. But they can't prove this stuff. And people are walking around having arguments about it. Well, this says this and this says that. I want to go off into mathematics and a whole lot of other things, <laughs> which actually has, well, mathematics, there's, there's, you've got to know some math to count years right. and so right. forth. Right. But uh, uh, it's not the equation of salvation. You see, so uh, uh, what man has managed to get off into is the doctrine of, uh, uh, of men because they have fallen away from sound doctrine mm -hmm. and they're practicing the doctrine of devils. This is why we celebrate all of the holidays that are celebrated uh, uh, today. And uh, verse 4 says, uh, uh, it said there's going to be a falling away first and that right. man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who oppose and exalt himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he, as God, sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is mm. Yahweh. You see, so we can very well see that Satan is in the process of, just like he said in Isaiah 14, I'm going to be just like the right. Most High. Right. I'm going to exalt my throne above the children of Israel, and I'm going to be just like the Most High. And when you look at the largest religions in the world today, you can very well see he got three quarters of the world that's worshiping. The other quarter, they don't worship nobody. Right. But he has three quarters of the world worshiping him. And it's all done through the slay of men, through new religions, that just new kids on the block that just came up within the uh, last 500 years. And nowadays, brother, 
they got so many religions out there that you can just pick and choose and go from one church to another one and never miss a beat, but you never hear the truth, not but, the whole truth. But you would agree, though, many people as uh, as well choose their deceits. Mm -hmm. I mean, they choose to be deceived. I mean, like even now, the Pharisees and Sadducees are swooping in on the people saying, vote, mm -hmm. vote, mm -hmm. vote. Mm -hmm. It's going to, you know, this is our saving grace if we vote. But, you know, it's not making any sense. Well... When uh, we went off into politics in mass, you know, during the civil rights movement, we did, our people didn't, our, at least so-called leaders didn't understand what politics was all about at that time. And they're still learning uh, uh, the political way of doing things. Like uh, I heard uh, uh, a campaign ad today talking about one of our, one of our civil rights activists that's, that's in office now. And they were saying that he brought back $5 million to the neighborhood for uh, Head Start and so forth and so, so on. Five million dollars. Newt Gingrich got $94 million from Aunt Marietta. Mm -hmm. So what is five million dollars out of that piece of pie, uh, uh, out of the national budget to bring back into the neighborhood? But what it does, it makes it seem like somebody's doing something. But regards to who we put in office, we'll never excel but so far. And you can believe one thing, neither one of us will never be president of this country. Mm. You see, simp that's simply because this country here was given to the Europeans, and they're not going to let slaves, the children of slaves, rise up and tell them what to do. See, this is, what, this is why the War of Armageddon has got to be fought, because the people of the earth is not going to want to deal with uh, 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 the children of Israel. As so this system has to be put down. Of course it has to. Of course it has to look at the system. I mean, crime is running rampant all over the earth. It's sin, right. and it's running rampant all over the earth. And the, the, the judicial system is bogged down. I mean, uh, uh, the only thing that you hear about this really, really being truly prosecuted is high-profile cases. They got, they got prisoners in, in these uh, 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 in these jails back to back. This is why the Messiah said he was going to have to come and open up the prison houses to let mm -hmm. our people out uh, 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 out of prison. Simply because the nations, uh, uh, I guess, they're afraid of us, brother, because they know how they've treated up. But right, see, right. in mass, those of us who know the truth, it's not in our hearts. It's not in our nature to be vindictive, right. uh, vengeance belong to our God. So what, what we've learned to do is when somebody do us some wrong, we go, didn't he say cast all your troubles on me? That's the trouble, <laughs> right? right? So what we do is go cast our troubles upon him and see what he, or would then sit back and watch and see what he's going to do about it because something is going to have to be done. Man is going to have to uh, learn. It's, it's a lot of people that's coming into the knowledge of the truth. But man is going to have to learn uh, uh, that he's going to have to fear his God and turn to God with his, with his whole heart and his whole soul. i tell you why. Before the Messiah comes to this earth, this earth is not going to be fit to live in. Like the Messiah say, O Jerusalem that killed the prophets, you shall not see me until you, uh, henceforth until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of Yahweh. That ties into one of the holy days. As sure, well. sure, it ties into all our holy days. This is why Yahweh told us to keep these holy days as memorials of things that has happened and memorials, they're shadows of things that's going to take place. Just like the tabernacle of the congregation that was built in the wilderness, right. The temple that uh, uh, Solomon built, all of these things are shadows of, th of eternal things that's going uh, 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 to come to pass. This is why Yahweh told Moses, say, look, make sure that you make everything exactly like you were told because these were patterns of things that were set up right. in heaven, you right. see. And this is what man don't realize. Man say, tell me, so well, you know, God got rid of the Jews. Hmm. And I keep asking, what if he got rid of the Jews who was the covenant made with? Right. Did he get rid of the, the representation of the house of, Ju uh, of the house of Israel that's in heaven in Revelation 12 chapter? Did he get rid of that right. too? Right. You see, so God can't get rid of Israel because he's married to Israel. And, uh, uh, and those of us who, now old covenant is Israel, we know that they committed adultery. So right. Yahweh stopped dealing with them. But what he did was this. He gave it to those that would hear. 
of the same people, mm -hmm. but he gave it to those that was, that was here, and that those that was here would be the remnant that would bring forth the fruit that would be meat of salvation, but they have the same house. But why, they, I mean, and that right there, that one little statement there about the old covenant and the new covenant is read, or yeah, those other old covenant, many people try to say, well, and they read that, say, well, that covenant was done away with, as if to say the people were cut off as well. And, not, and when they read, even in the New Testament, it says the new covenant will be made with the house of Israel, the house of Judah. Well, and, but people try to interject themselves into the place of the children of Israel, that remnant. Well, that comes from being taught a doctrine. Mm -hmm. being taught a doctrine out of the New Testament, not going back, laying that foundation. I mean, you have to go back and read the structure of the law and see just why all of these things mm -hmm. were set in place, you see. Uh, it's some things that Yahweh told us, say, you're going to do this forever. Right. You're going to do it forever throughout your generation and all of your dwellings. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a part of ever. Forever, right? So I'm, I'm quite sure we have, we, are, we have dwellings and we are in a generation. Right. And these things are set up because it's God's righteousness that was set up on the earth. Isn't it right for a righteous God to give us times to come to appear before him? Mm -hmm. huh? Holy times. And we're supposed to uh, uh, have no uncleanness among us, right? Mm -hmm. And we're supposed to come at because God is a pure God. Mm -hmm. So it, it, wouldn't it be right that we should be a pure people that come befo uh, before him? I mean, as far as our works are concerned. Right. See, we know that the wages of sin is death. Right. And, uh, uh, and when we sin, we're separated from our God. So these holy days were set up to, to, to keep us, to make us do hold it at least on those days, you know what I mean? Because you know what our people did. That's why we're slaves today. Right. At least be holy of those days. And you have to understand one thing. He didn't say that these were your feast. He said, right. these are my feast. Mm -hmm. That law, he didn't say this is your law. He said, this is my law. These are my ways, you see. And if you do this, you are going to rule the earth. Well, obviously our fathers didn't do it. Right. This is why the Messiah had to come and get rid of the part of the old covenant that was no good. See, the, the part of the old covenant that was no good was the animal sacrifice. Okay, okay. And then when you went into to the Levitical priesthood, the priest died, and they had to keep instituting new priests okay. and new priests and so, so forth. So what happened was when the Messiah came, when John saw him, he's called a lamb. Mm. As a matter of fact, in the book of Revelation, he's called a lamb 28 times. Mm. You see, so he was the lamb that came, Yahweh provided his own lamb because of the impossibility, uh, impossibility of the uh, blood of animals to cover our sin. Mm -hmm. So he sent his lamb to redeem us back to him, and in redeeming us back to him, he will also redeem us out of this captivity. Now, you know that we've been over here for 400 years. Right. And no one has said, restore us, or let my people go, have to. No one on the earth. Right. When, uh, it's just like when the, uh, when the nations had their population control meeting in, in Egypt, I think it was last year, on January 1st. We weren't invited, you see. Who were we seeing? We right. said nobody. Right. right. This year, when they have their meeting, we aren't invited. We haven't got a flag. We haven't got a governmental system. So what we have to do is we have to take what our captors give to us. And this is what uh, 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 Yahweh told us not to do. He told us don't learn, don't learn the ways of the strangers because they're vain, right? And see, the strangers keep telling us that we're going off to heaven and never, never land and so mm -hmm. forth and so on. And they're talking about, and when you look at the, at the religious leaders today, you can very well see that all of your religious, I mean the one that control the conferences, right. they're not from among our people. We still getting the crumbs, not understanding what's going to be set up here on this earth. Let me read you another piece of scripture here in the book of Acts. Okay. Uh, after the apostle was resurrected from the dead, and uh, he spent 40 days with his, with his disciples. The Messiah. Uh, yeah, after the Messiah, I'm sorry. He spent 40 days with his apostles, and he instructed them in quite a few things. Let me read you a question that they asked him, and people aren't asking that question mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. It's in Acts 2, uh, in verse, Acts 1, rather, in verse 4. It said, And being assembled together with them, 
commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard of me. Mm -hmm. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from now. Mm -hmm. When they therefore were come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, Will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Mm -hmm. In other words, when you send us this Holy Ghost, this power, is that when you're going to give the king, kingdom back to Israel? And he told him, so, well, look, it's not for you to know the times of the season, but this my father has put in his hands. He didn't say it wasn't going to be right. done. And when you go back and read all of the prophets, read how the nations are going to be falling away from God and read all of the prophets and so forth and so on, you can very well see that what God did, what Yahweh did was what he said he was going to do. He made us a kingdom of priests to teach the nations how to study war no more. You know, I think that too, though, is one of the problems that people had, the fact that you mentioned earlier, it was the land was mentioned 28 times in the Revelation, mm -hmm. and that was the problem I think people had um, with the Messiah coming. He came as a lamb. Mm -hmm instead of that lion right. of the tribe of Judah. Right, that, I, I, that's why. See, our fathers was expecting a deliverer. See, this is why they put so much, in, uh, so much stock in the Maccabees and different people because they were expecting a leader. Mm -hmm. It was quite a few people that came up during those times talking about he was the Messiah right. and led people away right. and they got murdered off and did not happen to them. Right. But when the Messiah showed on the scene, what happened was the people thought he was going to come and put down that, that European, that Roman control. And when he didn't do that, brother, then they hated that brother. But see, the thing of it was was this. He wasn't supposed to come and take uh, and uh, take Roman control. What he was supposed to do was this, like Paul told him in the 15 chapter, Romans 15 and verse 6, Christ came to conceive, con to confirm the covenant that was made with our fathers. Right. So when Christ shed his blood, his ministry, the three and a half years ministry, and the shedding of the blood was the sealing, the confirmation and the sealing of the new covenant with the same people that the old covenant was made with. This is why it was 10 years after the resurrection of, uh, uh, of the Messiah mm -hmm. before the first European got the word, got the Holy Spirit. Right. Because we had to have the church set up right. and things in place mm -hmm. to where uh, Paul's training had to be completed and everything right. so that those people can be sent to the nation to, 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 to spread this thing from Jerusalem out to the whole world like it's going to be done when the Messiah comes. Mm -hmm. See? And this is what Satan is trying to keep hid from you simply because the nations know how they've treated us, brother. Right. All the nations, the whole world know how they've treated us. And the thing of it is, is this. Yahweh is going to recompense it to them. And what they, what Satan is trying to that's, do with the nations... Elder, excuse me, just a moment. That's our, that's our cue for the Round the World Report. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm David Geis, and this is the Signs of the Times Around the World Report. Tonight's top story, tribulation, continues in the Middle East. Iraq has launched its latest global anti-American spin campaign. Iraq is portraying America as manipulating the UN. What if others in the world believe them? Also, Iraq appears to be smuggling oil out through Syria and Lebanon for sale on the international market. Iran began major military exercises on its border with Afghanistan. Relations between the two nations have uh, became hostile in September after the Taliban militia of Afghanistan admitted that their forces had killed eight Iranian diplomats and a journalist. The world economy. Who can control this beast? Early indications are that the G7 is somewhat ineffective after changes were made to stave off the global economic crisis last week. These changes have apparently failed. The details of what they did are tedious, but suffice it to say that the words fund and bailout are being used. The dollar was down against the yen in early trading. Obviously, the G7 is no global greenspan. The depressed economies that would be a recipient of such a bailout are getting a boost. What does this bring to mind? Robin Hood, Bolsheviks, global economic communism? President Clinton was an outstanding supporter of this move. It is apparently part of his bridge to the 21st century. 
In another step toward the New World Order, the EU now finally allows British beef on the bone. No more mad cows. Russia is calling on the international community for help in controlling its epidemic of drug-resistant tuberculosis. The epidemic threatens to become a pandemic. The Wide Peace Accords are a disaster. A bomber attacked a group of Israeli school children early this week. Then, in one incident, the Palestinian Authority fired at Israeli troops as they were pursuing suspects in the case. The Ham Hamas is threatening civil war unless Arafat stops implementing the Y Agreement. The U.S. is demanding an anti-terrorism plan when the Palestinian people are on the brink of a civil war. A car bomb exploded at a Palestinian refugee camp in Lebanon that was apparently intended for a member of Palestinian President Yasser Arafat's mainstream Fatah faction. In another twist, the U.S. is now at odds with the Israelis over expansion of building in certain Israeli settlements. Many rabbis are warning their parliamentary representatives that the transfer of land to the Palestinians is strictly against Jewish law. There will be no peace until the issue of Jerusalem is decisively settled. Now, here's Ruth Israel with our community update. Ruth? Hi, I'm Ruth Israel with Community Update. First tonight, a South Fulton woman was held at gunpoint at her home while leaving for work. Three gunmen allegedly forced the woman back into her home where her boyfriend was still asleep. The alarm awakened the boyfriend and one of the intruders was shot in the face and killed. This destroyed boyfriend was not charged for the shooting. Detectives are still searching for the other suspects. And on law and order, Louisiana sodomy law is challenged in court. Louisiana's 200-year-old law banning sodomy is on trial due to a group of homosexuals, the majority of them attorneys, saying the law is unconstitutional. The group maintains it violates the right to privacy and is a normal human act between two consenting adults. Testimony is expected from 31 witnesses to say homosexuality is normal. Other testimony is expected from a neurologist that sexual orientation is determined in the womb and that is no choice. 31 states since 1972 have abolished the sodomy law and 19 states, including Georgia, continue to uphold that law. And politics. President Clinton visited one of the largest and oldest black churches in Baltimore on Sunday to preach black voting. The president mixed politics and biblical commandments to get the message of get out and vote. The appearance of the president marked an effort by the Democratic Party to motivate faithful followers of that party. Clinton was quoted as saying, our politics should be guided by what our Lord said was the first and most important commandment. First, we must try to love the Lord our God with all our heart and love thy neighbor as thyself. Obviously, quoting James, Clinton urged his flock to be a doer. The actual text says, be a doer of the word and not just a hearer only. Of course, that would mean he is equating doing the word with voting Democratic. Health news, minorities to benefit from program to prevent spread of AIDS. Aid Atlanta will benefit from a $156 million program designed to combat the spread of AIDS among African Americans and Hispanics. AIDS still remains the number one killer of black Americans between the ages of 25 through 44, and the second leading killer of black women in that same age category. The program will target the church community to get information to the public. Black colleges will also be asked to participate. Back to you, David. Thank you, Ruth. As many as 7,000 are now dead from Hurricane Mitch, entire villages have been buried in mudslides. Parts of Kansas and Oklahoma are also flooded this week. And now from Rome, the Vatican issued a statement on papal primacy reasserting the Pope's position as the true leader of all Christians. The Pope especially warned charismatic Catholics to keep in check and guard their Catholic identity. 
Also this week, the Vatican's top-ranking foreign affairs specialist vis visited Egypt and Israel. The Archbishop gave a talk in Jerusalem in which he denounced what he called the illegal Israeli occupation of the Holy City. The Archbishop called for the preservation of free access to the holy sites in Jerusalem and the need for guarantees of the city's unique character as an international and interreligious patrimony. And finally tonight, lightning strikes twice. Another soccer match is struck by lightning. That makes two lightning strikes in several weeks at soccer games. This time, 11 people were killed, the entire team from the Congo. Many on the sidelines and in the stands were also injured. It won't be water, but fire this time. That's been the Around the World Report and Community Update for tonight. Thank you very much, and now back to our regular program. Welcome back to Signs of the Times. Uh, we welcome your phone calls at 770-559-2999. That's 770-559-2999. And what we're talking about tonight is events leading up to the coming of the Messiah. And we have the elder priest from the New Covenant Congregation of Israel, Yaakov ben Israel. Elder, as we talk about these events leading up to the coming of the Messiah, you talked about before the Messiah come, this earth really won't be fit to live in. Mm -hmm. And, and you, you said something, how it ties into our holy days, the blowing of the trumpets and mm -hmm. pouring out of the vows and rafts and so forth. Mm -hmm. But what are some other events that will be, uh, um, that we can look forward to happening during, right before the coming? Well, first, I, I, think, I, I, think, I think what I want, want to do first is uh, I like to talk about what's going to, who, who it's going to be that's go, how, what kind of power the person is going to have okay. that's going to lead us uh, uh, out of this captivity and going to destroy the earth and where that power came from. And we know that he's going to be called the mighty God, the Prince of Peace, the mm -hmm. everlasting Father, and so forth and so on. But let me read you something that, uh, that Yahweh told Moses in uh, Deuteronomy 18 chapter. Okay. He told him, uh, uh, Deuteronomy 18 and verse 15, he said, Yahweh your Elohim shall raise unto you a prophet from the midst of you, of your brethren, like unto me. Unto him you shall hearken. Unto all that you desire of Yahweh your Elohim and Tereb in the day of assembly, saying, Let me not hear the voice of Yahweh my God, neither let me see this great fire anymore, lest I die. <laughs> he said, I will raise up a prophet uh, uh, from among their brethren, like unto me. He keeps saying, like unto me, right? right? And I will put my words in his mouth, and he will speak unto them all that I have commanded him, right? Mm -hmm. And whosoever do not hear that prophet, I'm going to require it of him. Now, he said, like unto me. Now, when we get back here in, 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 uh, uh, in the earlier chapters, uh, uh, in chapter 6 of Exodus, mm -hmm. Uh, in chapter 6, I mean chapter 7 rather, listen what Yahweh told Moses. He said, And Yahweh said unto Moshe, See, I have made you a God to Pharaoh. Mm. Okay? Mm. I have made you a God to Pharaoh. Now, the man that's going to uh, uh, come up, he's going to have to be a God to our captives, right? Mm. He's going to have to be a lawgiver, because okay. Moses was the lawgiver, right? Okay. Plus, he's going to have to be uh, deliverer. Okay. And this is what all that the prophets said was that we were going to be delivered. But there were certain things that was going to happen upon the earth before uh, uh, before our deliverance come. And uh, I like to read uh, some things uh, so you know we, we can see what period of time we're, re we're living in right now. Mm -hmm. uh, right now we're in Revelation 6 okay. and uh, verse 7. Okay. It said, and we had, now remember the uh, uh, Yahweh was sitting on the throne. He had a book in his hand, in the book of Revelation. No man could look upon that book. And then the Messiah showed up, and he came over, and he took the book, and he began to open the seals. Right. So I'm, I'm not going to cover the first seals because it had to do with the, uh, with the Roman Catholic Church and then the Arabs during the uh, 13th century and, the, and uh, uh, had to do with the European common market coming back or the EC coming back up on the uh, scene. But let me go off into... Uh, the period of time that we're living in now, living in now, and it starts at Revelation 6 and verse 7. 
And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. Uh -huh. Remember? Behold the pale horse, right? <laughs> and the name and the name that sat on him was death, and hell followed him. Mm -hmm. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death and with the beast of the earth. Right? Now this is in, in Revelation 6. Revelation 13 told you that he caused all, small and great, rich and poor, to receive a name, number, and mark. And if you didn't receive that name, number, and mark, you wouldn't be able to buy or sell. Okay. And, uh, okay, so that's, that's the period of time that we're living in now with the formation of the beast. But once this beast is, is, is formed, we're going off into the period of time when it's going to be unprecedented uh, of trouble upon our people. We can see it coming. Mm -hmm. Black folks aren't talking about anything. We can see it coming. We can look at our children in the street and see it coming. And that Revelation, in the fifth seal, Revelation 6 and verse 9 said, And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of Elohim and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Yahweh Elohim? Do you not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on earth? And white robes were given to every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest just for a little season, three months, right? Mm -hmm. Until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were mm -hmm. should be uh, uh, fulfilled. In other words, the period of time known as the Great Tribulation period is when they're going to declare open war on us, like the Messiah told his, his, his apostles. See, there's going to come a time when whosoever killed you would think that he did God a favor. Right. So, this great tribulation, uh, uh, we're going to have to endure that three and a half years of great tribulation, and then after the great tribulation period is over with, then this is when uh, uh, Yahweh begins to pour his wrath upon the earth, and it's in uh, uh, Revelation 8 chapter. Mm -hmm. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about the space of a half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before Elohim, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came out and stood at the altar, having a golden census that was given unto him with much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which is before the throne. Mm -hmm. And the smoke of the incense which came from the prayers of the saints ascended up for God out of the angel's hand, right? Okay, and then he took the census and threw it to the earth, and there was voices and lightning and a great earthquake. Now, everybody talking about this great earthquake that's going to come, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to have one in the, in the sixth seal, and we're going to have one uh, uh, after the seventh seal is opened up. And the first angel sounded, and there followed hail, mingled with fire and blood, and they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of trees were burned up, and all green grass. And the second angel sounded, and as it were a great mountain with fire was cast into the sea, and a third part of the sea became blood. Mm. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and the third part of all ships were destroyed. Mm -hmm. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of water, and the name of the star is called Wormwood, mm -hmm. and the third part of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. Now we're talking about uh, uh, this angel, this star, uh, this angel coming down and stirring up the waters and making the fresh water that travels through the earth and purifies itself, making that bitter. And making it poisonous for men to uh, men to use. Look how they're using radi radiation and so forth and so mm -hmm. on. You, we can very well see. Before you go to that next one, let's mm -hmm. take this phone call. Okay. And come right back. Caller, go ahead. State your name, please. My name's Roger. Yes, sir. Um, I was calling to find out that um, why should we believe uh, the words that he's reading in that Bible? And do the Quran hold just as much as importance as uh, that the Bible that he's reading. Okay, thank you for your call. Mm -hmm. Simply and, because sorry, the no. Holy Quran does not tell me what nation of people I came from. The Holy Quran we got from the Arabs, right? 
as quiet as is kept, the Arabs were the Babylonians that invaded our holy city in 606 BC, right? Mm -hmm. The Holy Quran does not tell me of the one world governmental system that's coming up on the earth. The prophecies that are being fulfilled now, the, what they call the Holy Quran does not tell me these things. That's why I don't read it. I got one at home. I've had one since 51. But it does not compare with the thing. The reason why I don't read it anymore, because it didn't tell me nothing about me, about my people. What it told me about was Arabs. What it did was went into, see, I know for a fact who wrote this Bible here. Mm -hmm. It's a proven fact that the Hebrew Israelites, black folks, wrote the Bible. See, I came up along with Elijah Muhammad, right? I remember when we, uh, folks was telling people, well, God didn't just create uh, one man and one woman. He created 13 tribes of people, and there's one tribe on the moon. And then mm. them Gentiles say the eagle has landed on the moon. <laughs> you see what I mean? Right. And it's a whole lot. Jacob, the, the, the white man was created from the black man. A, a black man took some up in the mountain and grafted skin and all that junk. Uh, so what did, what, what did the fourth trumpet do? Uh, yeah, that's what I want to do, my brother. I'm going to get back. Just, that, that's just why, to, just that's to let why our I'm audience gonna... know, we're talking about events leading up to the coming of the Messiah and uh, what the elders share with us now. See. Folks, are some we're, things tied into our holy days, uh, in particular, the Feast of the Trumpets. Folks worried about why I don't read this book here. Whoever it is, you go in the book and read this here. Uh, 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 Revelations uh, 16 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vows of wrath of God upon the earth. That's what I'm interested in, brother. What I'm going to have to do to escape this wrath because everybody knows it's coming. Mm -hmm. See? And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men that had the mark of the beast and upon them that worship his image. Now, we know that this, they're setting this up in place now. Right now. You see? And my fathers wrote about this 2,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. Verse 3. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became the blood of a dead man, and every living soul in the sea died. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the, upon the rivers, uh, fountains of waters, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the waters saying, You are righteous, O Yahweh, which are and was and shall be, because you have judged us. For they have shed the blood of your saints and your prophets. Mm. And you have given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. Now, here we're talking about the fourth angel pouring his vial out, and men were scorched with fire upon the world. We know that the nations are set up to use that atomic energy on America. What I've just read is the destruction of America. Mm. You see, the destruction of the daughter of Babylon. See, one thing I like about Yahweh, mm. and one thing I like about what my fathers wrote, he said, I don't do anything until I tell my right. servants the prophets first, right. right? And I can go back in history and read things that took place that, that Daniel wrote about, right. that, that, that Isaiah wrote right. about many, hundreds of years, uh, thousands of years before these things came about. See, mm -hmm. this is what I like about, about my God. He said, I, he said, look, I do these things and tell you these things so you can't say, well, my idol told me about this. Search the law and the prophets. Search the law and Let's the prophets. Let's go to the phones. Call, go ahead, state your name, please. Yes, my name is Merlene DeRosia. Um, how would I get in touch with the elder if I, um, if I wanted to obtain more information on some of the topics that he's discussing? Good question. We're at 3901A Covington Highway. That's Decatur, Georgia, 30032. Or we can be reached at 4428658695. Six, five, eight, six, nine. Yes, ma'am. Also, there's a website located at www.thencci.com, and it's on your screen right now. Okay. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. I can also give my sister another phone number uh, that she can reach me at if she wish to. Uh, she can get some information. Uh, if she calls 404-212-9851. She can get uh, she can get in touch. As a matter of fact, it's someone it's someone manning that phone right now, so she can get in touch uh, with that number there. I'm quite sure any question that she have, if she's willing to sit down and take her Bible and the history books and balance them off, she'll get her answers. Okay, we got another call. Call the go ahead. State your name, please. Yeah, my name is Omari. Uh, the question that I have um, with the age and the um, landmass and wisdom of Africa, why is the book that you're reading from, which I give you respect, bro, um, 
why would that be the most important book for us to relate to as human beings? Thank you for your call, Elder. Simply because your fathers wrote it. Your fathers wrote it as a legacy to the world, and the world is taken and it turned it upside down and fed it back to you and put you in cap put you in captivity and then fed it back to you. This is why it's so important. It's the only way that you're gonna find salvation is in this book. And you can read any other book you want to, and none of them tell you eventually what's gonna happen. None of them told you when different things was gonna happen up on this earth, exact mm -hmm. timing except this book here. This is why it's so important uh, 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 about this book because this book here is the only book, I'm 60 years old, mm -hmm. and I've searched book after book after holy book after ho so-called holy book, and this is the only book I've run into that I can go into and put uh, my hand on the first one of us and bring us from our creation as a nation of people right over here to America as slaves and then right out of America back into our own land set up as the governing system of the world. You just read about the, uh, oh, we got another call? Call go ahead, state your name, please. Uh, yes, uh, my name is uh, Daryl Thomas. Yes, sir. And uh, I have a quick question. I was listening to um, public radio station today, uh, WRFG, and there was a gentleman on the air who was saying that uh, he mentioned Holly Selassie mm -hmm. and he talked about the fact that Holly Selassie was a direct descendant of uh, the Queen of Sheba and King Solomon mm -hmm. and that uh, he uh, of course Rastafarians review, uh, view him as uh, the King of King and Lord of Lords right. and that you all were talking about that. I just wanted to know out of curiosity is there any relevance to that or uh, is that tying anything tying into anything of any substance or is this just you know um, I don't know, a fictitious culture that someone has going on or whatever. Thank you for your call, sir. All right. Well, let me put it to you this way, my brother. The house of Judah, Haley Selassie said he's the Lion of Judah. According to the prophets, the Lion of Judah is, uh, is going to live forever. Now, another thing, the way that the Rastafarians claim airship through the throne is through an adulterous uh, a relationship between Solomon and Sheba. Now, one, now, when you look at Sheba, Ham had a son named Sheba, not Sheba, not a daughter, okay? Ham had a son named Sheba. Now, the queen of Sheba that they're talking about, all you have to do, see, th this is what I say about, you know, knowledge. Uh, all you have to do is check the type of spices that she brought up to Solomon, mm -hmm. the mode of transportation that she used, and you, and, and you find out that those type of spices didn't even go in Africa. The mode of transportation she used did not come from Africa. The gold of, the, she brought gold from Ophir, right? She was from South Yemen, right down at the United Arab Emirates. She was an Arab. She was not an African, you hmm. see. So what Haile Selassie did was say this, well, Queen of Sheba went up there and uh, she had sex with, out of all the women in the world now, she went up there and she was so tough that she had sex with, it's one, it's one chapter in the Bible wrote about it, right? right. They, they, they've gathered up this all this chunk here. Uh, she had a relationship with, 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 with Solomon, went back home to her husband and had an illegitimate child in her husband's house, right? Right? And he, he, he raised him up and he was uh, mentally and out of Mendeley came Rastafari, right? And Haile Selassie came out of that lineage of people, right? Hmm. But we are all of the house of Judah, see? And the only thing he did over there in Ethiopia was claim heirship to a throne that, it, what did he get it? See, you have to understand when the Lion of Judah set up his kingdom, there will be peace all over this earth for a thousand years. And that's a good point. You see, and this is, hasn't happened. As a matter of fact, Haile Selassie was at, at war with the French. He was at war with the Africans. He was trying to carve out his little niche, right? But when, when, when my Messiah, when my brother shows up on the scene, they're going to beat their swords and the plowshares and their spears and the pruning hooks. Nation will not lift up sword against nation, neither will they learn war anymore. Let's go back to the phones. Call the go ahead and state your name, please. Hello? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead and state your name. Uh, my name is Amina. Yes, ma'am. And I wanted to find out if uh, you all, your followers, or any have any um, affiliation with uh, Ben Ami, the Hebrew Israelites that, uh, that are in Israel now? No, ma'am. 
And uh, when do you have, what's the difference between you, you all, the Hebrew Israelites, and the ones that are affiliated in, with the Israel, Israelites, Hebrew Israelites in Israel? And do you have like a Bible study? Well, we are all Hebrew Israelites. Uh, Benjamin is a Hebrew Israelite, uh, just like uh, we are Hebrew Israelites. It's our, it's our, it's our, our nationality. But as far as, doctrine, as far as doctrine is concerned, uh, the people that believe in Ben Amin, they consider him their Messiah. We got about five minutes. You see, so I can't deal with that. I can't deal with that because if he the Messiah, according to the prophets, he has to die on a tree. It's supposed to be peace in the land. Right. He's supposed to die on a tree, right? If he's the Messiah, he's the lamb, he's supposed to teach three and a half years and then die on a tree, right? He's been over there since 67. Supposed to be a lion now. A lion. Not, not a lamb. Well, a lamb. According, to what, <laughs> according to the Bible, when the children of Israel return to the land, there's going to be peace all over right. the earth. Right. And anybody is in that land right now today, according to the prophets, is going to kill, be killed off by the beast or the false prophet. Let's go back to the phones. Caller, go ahead. State your name, please. Caller, go ahead. State your name. Do we have a call? Got yeah. Okay. Hello? Yes, sir. What's your name? My name is Stan. Okay. Uh, yeah, the elder is real good tonight. I like that. What I can't understand is, is that when most people, I read the Quran and what I found out is that the Quran quotes the Bible, <laughs> but the Bible doesn't quote the Quran. Right. And most people, I don't understand how, how they can't see that. Even, even in a rational point of view, uh, the Bible was here before the Quran. And then you have somebody come along maybe 1,400 years after. 1,400 years after. We, sorry, brother, you got cut off, but uh, nevertheless, uh, I, I think we get your point. The, the, uh, the scriptures was here before the Quran came on the scene, of even course before was, um, Muhammad came on the scene. Uh, brother, most of us, us older brothers around my age, we came through the nation of Islam. We saw that for what it was uh, uh, right away. It was a good moneymaker. Hmm. And folks got rich off it. It was a good money maker. See, uh, back when uh, when Muammar Gaddafi's grandfather gave uh, uh, Elijah Muhammad that that money, to, uh, 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 they were talking about buying house, building hospitals and everything on the lakefront in, in Chicago. Them folks said, "Uh-uh, you ain't coming out here. We gonna make a. We gonna we gonna let our police department come in and ride horses up and down here, you know." Mm. But all of that was geared to for us to arm ourselves because the Arabs felt that we would be a viable force, cannon fodder, here in this country here once they started their terrorist acts against this country here. But it didn't go off then because the money went other places. You Let's know. take this last call. Call it, go ahead, state your names. I think we've got about two minutes left. Call it, go ahead, state your name, please. Call it, go ahead. Oh. Am I on? Yeah, go ahead, sir, quickly. Oh, okay. I was just listening to you guys, and I was wondering, are uh, you guys um, followers of Christ? Sure. Oh, okay. Of okay. course. Thank you, sir. Num that's the number one, brother. Okay. Yeah, sir, that's the number one. But I tell you what, have you noticed, my brother, that people don't tell you what your nationality he was? They say he's a Christian. Have you noticed that the Europeans painted them all white during the Renaissance? But when you check back into the history, you find out that he came from the nation of Hebrew Israelites, and mm. they were black folks. Mm. Why the cover-up? Why the deception? What they did was this. They gave us a God named Jesus. Mm. See, the brother's name was Yahshua, which means Yahweh's salvation. Right. So they gave us a new God and gave us a new doctrine, gave us a birthday for him, a resurrection for him, and everything else, right? even changed the, the Sabbath day from Saturday to Sunday to match with, to go along with him, didn't mm. Miss American Pie wasn't it? Right down, the, right down the middle. Same gave thing us, we get today. Gave us a vicar. Right. Of course. Of course. Well, that's our, oh, we got one minute now. Okay. Elder, you want to have some closing comments? Well, the young lady asked me where did we uh, 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 have uh, our services at. We have services at uh, 3901A mm -hmm. Covington Highway. Uh, that's in Decatur, Georgia. The, the uh, zip code is 332. Mm -hmm. And uh, we meet on Saturday. We have Sabbath day classes on Saturday at 1 p.m. Bible, cla 
prophecy class on Sunday morning at 10.30, mm -hmm. <coughs> excuse me, and we have a uh, 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 Bible class on Tuesday night at 8 p.m. and a sister's class on Thursday at 8 p.m. And when you come, if you got any questions, all you have to do is, if it's about what we're dealing with because we prepare a class, raise your question, raise your hand, and then we'll take you in the Bible and let you find, read the answer to you and see what you get up out of it. All right. Uh, I think that's it for tonight. Uh, join us next week right here, same time, 8 p.m.